Hey, Brendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Steve and Larson. Available where our podcast can be found, of course, taped live to Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Steve and Larson. On today's episode, we're going to review NXT. We're going to talk about the latest on AEW's Max Caster situation. And, of course, we're going to talk about CM Punk's first comments on AEW rumors. Uh, before we get started on all that, though, do us a huge favor. Give this show a thumbs up. Hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. Keep this going in raw train a rolling, going. Larson. Yeah. Before we get started with all that as well, we got a couple announcements to make. Coming up this Saturday, the biggest wrestling event. Oh, wow. Maybe ever. Because oh, wow. each year, Triple Mania, number one, only gets better. And number two is always the biggest wrestling event of that particular year. And we are going to watch it. And you can watch it with us. We're going to be uh, doing a watch along. It's a second screen experience. However, it's already been announced by uh, Lucha Blog, I think, that he's just going to be running on his Twitch channel. So we'll have the link available for you guys. And we're going to be bringing on the Enforcer and, of course, Kayla and Alex from Church of Joshi. That's right. The Church of Friendos, our very first congregation, is going mm -hmm. down this Saturday on the Twitch. It is so much fun. Triple Mania is a blast, Larson. Best show of the year. Best What's your favorite year. Triple Mania moment of all time? Well, there's so many to choose from. There's so many. So many. Oh, it's but it's, I think it's got to be uh, Blue Demon Junior's hammer. It's the hammer. That was so unexpected. It's he comes hammer. up from behind, Doctor Wagner Junior. Bash him in the back, puts his hand the turnbuckle, bashes his hand with the hammer. It was brilliant. It was so. Gosh, I love that. So unexpected. One of my favorite moments. Who was the fella who took that nasty sunset flip bomb full speed into that table, and it just looked like he completely was it. Uh, it was super fly. Oh, super, super fly. Thank you. And it was super something. Oh, man. Arrow star yeah, amazing. Falling. Not just amazing. jumping. He just sort of arrow star just goes up on top of something tall, high up in the in the, in the, in the arena and just, yeah, it falls, just falls off it on stuff. Yeah, it's great. People. It's fantastic. Oh, Vampiro asking for his music, man. That's so many last great year. Moments. Last year, the uncomfortable uh, mariachi. Yeah. Oh, man. Vampiro That's farting great. on commentary. Yeah. It's all, it's all great stuff. It's that all poor great guy. Stuff. That poor guy. He had the most uncomfortable shoes. You could tell. The seat not was happy uncomfortable. The Mariachi's not happy. feet were not happy. We had a, This year we've got the Copa Bardal. Mm -hmm. But the, the mm -hmm. car oil Bardal has a cup now. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. It's going to be great. <laughs> I'm, I'm so looking forward to this. This is going to be a blast. This uh, Thursday. Spe yeah, speaking of, of a blast. This Thursday we're debuting... Going in raw smash zone because we can't do the impact streams anymore. What's a what's a, a synonym for for impact, Larson? Smash, smash. So smash. we'll be in not the impact zone. We'll be in the smash zone. And oh boy, we got a ton of great content for you guys. We're just gonna be throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. This is gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be pretty interesting. Yeah. Don't know what to expect. Don't know what to expect. We no gotta idea. catch it live because we're not gonna keep this stuff on VOD. Because legally, I don't think we're allowed to. Nope, don't think so. Don't think Trying so. To keep our yeah. channel over here. That's true. You want to dive into this news here real quick? Yeah, before we start our NXT recap, we got a couple little uh, news brief bits. What's first on the docket, Larson? Uh, first, I believe this is CM Punk's first uh, uh, official on the record comments about the rumors about him going to AEW. So he was on Sunday night's main event and was asked about the the teases of his AEW arrival and asked, "Hey, Phil. Hey, Phil. What do you do on August 20th?" And this is what Phil had to say, quote, "I think I might be doing a screening. This isn't confirmed yet, so I probably shouldn't blast this out everywhere, but we're talking about doing a screening of episode 3 of Heels at AMC in Chicago. That's one of the dates that has been proposed. I hope to see everybody there." Mm -hmm. So this is all kind of nebulous stuff. Mm -hmm. We're talking about it. Maybe we'll do it. Mm -hmm. Maybe we won't. This one of the dates proposed several. Uh, so this is a, this is obviously a cover story to keep up the surprise of him showing up at the first dance. I guess the question is, uh, should we expect to see at the screening of episode three of Heels on Stars 
should we expect to see like uh, some sort of stand in for CM Punk, like a fake CM Punk? Remember Maybe. how uh, Saddam used to do that? <laughs> they would trot this dude out on TV. And it was like, that's not. Why are they saying that Saddam Hussein? It's not him. So I was watching. I was watching uh, the Val Kilmer documentary on uh, Amazon Prime. Oh, website. how is that? It's good. It's yeah. good. It's interesting. And so while doing Island of Doctor Moreau, they had a stand-in for Marlon Brando. Of course, yeah. And it's I think his name was Brando Frank. Uh, <laughs> Frank. And so there's because of Val Kilmer, you know, he had always had a video camera with him, was like recording everything. Um, and so he's talking to Frank, uh, you know, in. Brando's uh, uh, costume for his part in that particular scene. Yeah, and he's like, "Hey, you're doing a great job, Frank." Oh well, that's not. <laughs> oh man, that's the most Brando thing ever. That guy didn't he read like cue cards on the set of The Godfather? Or something. Yeah. So like here, that? here's another another aside about Brando in that particular movie is is so uh, Kilmer is like looking for him. Yeah. Like they're not shooting at the moment, and he comes across uh, Brando laying in a hammock. Yeah. And he's asking Brando some question. And Brando just says, can you give me a push? <laughs> <laughs> this is on camera? Yeah. Oh, I got to see that. That's great. <laughs> can you give me a push? Oh. It's, a really, it's, a really short, it's a really short segment, but it's pretty funny that he's trying to ask Brando like a question, like how you doing or something. And Brando says, can you give me a push? Oh, that's amazing. That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, getting back to Phil Brooks. He also commented on Darby Allen. And they talked to him and they asked about him. Uh, cause obviously Darby Allen mentioned the phrase best in the world. First punk said this, he says, best in the world. That could be anybody. That's Daniel Bryan, right? That's my assumption. I hear best in the world. I think Brian, of course, it's also been reported that D Daniel Bryan, Brian Danielson, we have to start getting used to calling him that has yeah. signed with AEW. and speaking about Darby Allen punk said this, I think Darby Allen's great. Everybody in the wrestling world needs to never do a dive again because you can't do it better than Darby. If you watch Darby wrestle, he looks like he's trying to murder somebody. Doesn't get any better than that. Stop doing dives, everybody. Hold on there, Phil Brooks. There's a little dude I'd like to call Ray Phoenix, and he does a pretty cool suicide dive himself. Yeah, but it's, 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 it's just as good as, as Darby's, I would say. I feel his point, though. Darby Allen's suicide dive is really great. It is really good. We should mention these transcripts are from Fightful. Yes, we that is correct. That, already. that is correct. Uh, so, yeah, uh, there's more in the article. Check it out. He said a, a couple other things. But he's focused, apparently, on being an actor. So, hey, maybe uh, <laughs> maybe all those people at the United Center are going to be hugely disappointed come uh, uh, August 20th. Larson, what do you think about that? No, the, the Phil will be there. <laughs> Pretty confident Phil's going to be there. Who is going to be the Phil stand-in, then, at the, the Heels uh, premiere? That's a good question. That's who a knows? good question. Anyways, That's a good question. Continuing on, talking about more people who are with AEW. Uh, for now, anyways, Max Caster found himself embroiled in a bit of controversy following a fairly tasteless rap prior to his match on last week's episode of AEW Dark. His bars, which were subsequently edited out after Dark's initial airing, were later called terrible by music critic and son of billionaire Tony Khan. <laughs> Yesterday, Fightful Select, go subscribe to Fightful Select. They're great. Provided They're the best. A bit of an update on Caster's status with AEW after it was noted that he had removed references to AEW and the acclaimed from his Twitter profile. Fightful reports that Caster is, quote, on ice for the time being, but provided no details on how long he could be held off TV. But then since then, the acclaimed have been removed from AEW's tag team rankings, and their announced match on this week's Dark was edited out of the broadcast. Larson, what do you make of this Max Caster situation? I would assume that uh, given the controversy that sprung up last week, uh, the decision was made to just take him off TV for a little bit. You know, I'm guessing Tony Khan probably had a conversation with Max Caster about running. Because one thing Tony Khan said last week was when Caster is on Dynamite, they go through whatever he's going to say uh, before he goes and does it. That wasn't the case for Dark. So I'm guessing going forward, not only Tony Khan going to oversee the editing of Dark and Elevation when it comes to Max Caster doing his uh, pre-match uh, uh, raps. He's going to go over him with those as well. And they're probably just going to hold him off TV for a while. And then, you know, probably three, four weeks time, they'll come back. That would be my guess. I, r I really hope the dude doesn't lose his job because of this. You know, it's, it's, it, look, it's, 
when you give people the freedom to do what they want, which Tony Khan seemingly does. For the most part, yeah. You're going to run into issues and you're going to mm-hmm. have road, you're going to have speed bumps along the way. And it'd be awful if this guy ended up getting fired from his job or even if he decided, hey, I don't want to be censored. I'm leaving it. You know, I mean, that's that's obviously his decision. But, uh, you know, hopefully everybody in this situation just learns, hey, man, you can be a heel. You can be edgy if that's what you want to be. But within a certain reasonable limit, you know, Mm -hmm. like the stuff that uh, the the stuff that that, that was that that was not reasonable, (laughs) you know, like you can't say certain things, man. Um, So. You know, hopefully, uh, hopefully he, you know, uh, and Tony Khan needs to learn too, man. You can't just let anybody go out there and do anything. You got to have some checks, you know. Yeah. So man, that is what it is. You know, this, uh, I guess it's one of the, the growing pains of a, of a new company, you know. Mm-hmm. They, they go out there with a particular philosophy sometimes. Uh, in this case, giving performers a lot of freedom uh, to, to do, say, kind of what to the extent what they want during their promos. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and and at times people might cross the line, mm-hmm. and then, you know, Tony Khan, I imagine, will have to go have a conversation with that individual, and and make sure they establish, you know, the the zones by what within which they need to keep their their content and just proceed from there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There was also man, what was it? Oh, it's slightly reminiscent of when uh, NWA had that Jim Cornette incident, which eventually led, I think, to him losing that gig. And they were sitting on that. You know, they somebody actually edited that, put that together, and put it out there. And, uh, you know, it's like they probably just don't think, oh, okay, well, number one, people rarely do their job to perfection or even to, you know, uh, high standards. So it's probably like, <laughs> oh, yeah, Zerd just flies, whatever, who cares? Um, so, uh, so, yeah, I don't know. It's It's a learning experience. For everybody. Let's take a quick break here to get a word in from our sponsor, Amazon Music. Since all the friendos out there are listening to this show, it's safe to assume you love listening to podcasts. Well, you'll find tons of podcasts, including this one, going in raw on Amazon Music. That's right. Amazon Music has more than 10 million free podcasts to listen to. But that's not all. They also have thousands of music stations and great playlists to stream for free. Yeah, and if you're like Larson and love your music on demand and ad free, you got to give Amazon Music Unlimited a try. It gives you unlimited access to a lot of songs, and I mean a lot of songs, like 75 million songs, as well as podcasts, music videos, and so much more. And with Amazon Music Unlimited, you can listen to any song anywhere, whether it be in the car, walking your dog, doing wind sprints, anywhere offline and with unlimited skips or listen to podcasts like this podcast going in raw so if you've never tried amazon music unlimited now's a great time for a limited time new customers can try amazon music unlimited free for 30 days no credit card required just go to amazon.com slash g-i-r that's amazon.com slash g-i-r to try amazon music unlimited free for 30 days Amazon.com slash G I R renews automatically cancel anytime terms apply. So yeah, right. exactly. Uh, exactly. Speaking of learning experiences, we're learning what NXT is, uh, is shaping up to be the takeover 35, 36. I can't tell what that logo. I Larson. see the logo. It looks to like 35. looks like a 35. What is the, you know, for a good stretch, NXT's design department was pretty impeccable. You know, they were doing a lot of really, especially if you take over a lot of really good stuff. There were so many good logos. And then this one, it's not bad. It's just you can't tell if it's thirty-five or thirty-six. They really turned a corner downwards with their design, wasn't it? Like uh, the triple X one, didn't they do like thirty? Was like it was just like three X's. Just mm-hmm. really didn't. It was not inspired at all. And I think since then they just been phoning it in. I don't know. Really, like they did cool stuff with like Halloween Havoc. Like some of their um, yeah, themed yeah, yeah. episodes of NXT were really good. Well, I think I think too it benefited them when they were doing takeovers on the road because. Then they could tailor the logo to whatever city they're going to be in, you know. Mm-hmm, yeah, there was an obvious uh, 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 inspiration you could draw from the location of the takeover. Now we're all from the CWC. You can just have like a fan same. with like his arms folded <laughs> as the logo. 
<laughs> Looking at his phone, doing this. Oh my God, they're tearing apart my NXT. <laughs> they're they're just some dude on his phone looking at. Give me back my NXT. Reading Fightful. <laughs> yeah, give, um, give me back my Takeover Thirty Six. Yeah, no, or Thirty Five, whatever it is. So it was, it was, you know, like uh, with so much maybe changing with NXT. Um, I don't know. It's kind of taken me out of the out of the product to a, a, a certain degree. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk about this finish to the main event because it was a pretty good match leading up to it. it was Pete Dunn and Ilya Dragunov. Yeah, um, it's a pretty solid match. And then they tr- seemingly try to do a distraction finish mm-hmm. with Walter coming out, distracting Ilya, leading to a Pete Dunn win. However, there were like two sequences of moves before Pete Dunn eventually got the win. And I kind of felt like if the story beat is Walter, his mere presence is distracting Ilya, that should more or less lead directly to loss. When Ilya has enough presence to not only kick Pete Dunn out of the ring, avoid a bitter end, hit a couple shots and go for his finish, I kind of feel like at that juncture, he's not really that distracted. Sometimes in wrestling, you need things to be a tad more obvious than they are. I mean, I'll make. I, I've heard of athletes. I'll give you an example. My uh, my niece, right? She used to play basketball uh, in high school as a <laughs> freshman and maybe a sophomore. Never want. I was always like, man, I you know, I'm gonna come to your game. I'm gonna come to your game. She never wanted me to go to her. I'd have to sneak in there. Right with like a like a Groucho Marx outfit, right? To get the mustache and the glasses, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'd go in there with like the oversized suit, and I'd have to. I would actually have to sneak in. I'd I'd drop her off, say, "Okay, have a good game," and then I just circle around a couple times. And when I knew the game started, I would just sneak in so I could watch my kid play. Right? Mm -hmm. She hated when we were there. Didn't want her family to be there. Right? It's not like she would look around like when we were there. And, and 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 freak out just knowing you'd be the there. presence of him was enough to cost him the match now with wwe with wrestling we are used to distraction boom boom match is done because of the distraction but i'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt here even though it didn't tell it didn't tell this distraction bit in the same language that pro wrestling usually does well i think also too if it's a situation where Ilya saw Walter and kind of like just lost his mind, you know, and just started wrestling haphazardly. He looked devastated when Walter came out. He did. But then I felt like he came, you know, he got his wits back about him to a degree. Mm -hmm. And now if he was wrestling like completely unhinged after avoiding that first bitter end and because he lost his wits, that led to his loss. Then that's that I can get behind. That's the story. You know, in that little two minute segment, I understand what they were trying to do. I didn't feel like it was the most effective way, especially when Ilya's got this match takeover. And if he's going to eat a loss, you know, right before takeover, it's got to be a really protected loss. And I just felt like, yes, I understand there's the distraction. Yes, I understand just Walter being there by itself could be enough. I just, you know, I just felt like in terms of the story beats needed to hit for that to be believable for me, they it just wasn't done to the extent that I felt like, okay. I get why, like, in a broader sense, a macro sense, I get why Ilya lost. But I just felt like in terms of the actual beats that led to his his defeat just didn't feel uh, believable enough to me. Uh, fair enough. Let's talk about the post-match shenanigans and what it means for yeah. Walter's uh, and Ilya's chances at the upcoming TakeOver 36-35. Um, after the match, Walter gets in the ring with the most nonchalant look on his face, he gets in there while Pete Dunn's still in there, and Pete Dunn, who's you know just beat Ilya, is doing his thing. Pete Dunn, they have a face-off. Lots of history between those guys, of course. And Pete Dunn does his shrug, and he leaves. He doesn't want any piece of Walter. Who does? Ilya. Walter gets up, tries to uh, you know he's about to to make a move on Ilya. Ilya is able to escape that and kind of like shift Walter's weight so that he kind of ends up rolling out of the ring. So he dispatches of Walter. Walter's title is still there. Ilya then picks this thing up, rubs all over it, looks at it, stares at it, basically owns it for a good minute or so. What does that say? Now, our good friendo and editor supreme Rob Zerver has a wonderful thread 
mm-hmm. on his Twitter account. Check that mm-hmm. out right now. Go follow mm-hmm. Rob Zerver. He's great. Where he it's his supposition that he thinks, he believes, Ilya is going to take this win, given that previous title wins uh, for the U.K. title have always been on U.S. soil um, at proper takeovers. Yeah. What's your read? Do you think that the standard go-home math of Ilya rubbing all over this thing uh, uh, stands to reason, given what we've seen in wrestling sort of history? What's your what's let me your Let me let me read this, this comment here from White Brownie here in chat before I answer that question. He says, uh, Walter once told Ilya that every time he sees Walter, he will taste failure. Okay, that makes sense. That adds something to it. Just the mere presence of Walter is enough for him to, to fail, essentially. I get that. All right. Uh, now, to answer your question, the, the math is a bit complicated because this wasn't the go-home episode. You know, we got one more. So historically speaking, at least on the go-home episode, if you touch that title and you're in a title match, your chances are, 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 are very slim at winning it. The math now, has been a bit just I'm sorry not to interrupt you. I'll let you finish in a second. The math has been a little looser with certain aspects. Remember, Baron Corbin did everything to that King of the Ring. Oh, he farted on that throne so many times. He rubbed his yeah. buttocks on there. So anyways, continue your point. So anyways, uh, it's not the go home. Uh, I would be surprised if Walter doesn't absolutely wreck Ilya next week uh, to kind of steer the go home math in a direction that would seem to, to really strongly indicate that Ilya was going to win. Um, you know, I still expect him to, despite the fact that, uh, yeah, he picked up that belt and, and, you know, was holding it as the show went off the air. But, uh, yeah, the fact that it's not the, the, the go home show itself, you know, I, I don't really put a whole lot of consideration to him holding that belt. I, I mean, it doesn't look yeah. in, in terms of go home math doesn't look good. Yeah. If you're in a title match, don't touch that title until you win it. You know, but it's not necessarily go home math because this isn't yeah. a go home show. I, yeah. I agree with you. I think that they're setting this up just with with everything Ilya is saying. There's there's two there's two lines of thought here. Number one, if Ilya loses, he's coming to NXT Prime. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like there's nothing he this story has been building for ages ever since, and I don't remember when it was. It was uh, was it a year ago now that uh, him and Walter fought? It was a while ago. Oh. Might have been last fall. Yeah, Um, I think it was last fall. It was match of the year in my book. It was spectacular. It was really good. And ever since then, they've been building this in in UK. There's nobody close that uh, that can touch Walter. It's got to be Ilya. My only reservation is, what the hell do you do with Walter after that? If Ilya wins it, is he is Walter done with his contract? Is he done with WWE? Is he like, hey, I had my time. I was a standard bear in UK. I got the matches that I wanted to. Um, I'm gonna run my school or, or or go back to WXW. Or is there any chance that he's gonna end up in NXT Prime himself and let Ilya carry on the the UK brand? Uh, I don't know honestly. I, just, I don't so... know how you do with that. As far as, I mean, I guess it's, if he signed a three-year deal, which uh, I think is fairly, at least at one point, was fairly standard. He made his debut January 2019. Um, wow, yeah. So, I that'd mean, be, it's that'd possible. Be coming up. That'd be coming up. It's um, possible, I suppose, but but who knows? Yeah, I wonder. I wonder, man, if, I wonder if he's just like, yeah, no, I'm not. You know, you've had me for three years. Not really interested. You know, you, you had me at Survivor Series. You didn't impress me then. No. Um, so, and who knows if Vince wants him, you'd think that Vince would be all over Walter, but yeah. maybe not, maybe not. Um, but, you know, he's been, if he's been in, in NXT UK for three years, done basically all he could do. Yeah. You know, like what, if there's nothing left for him and he doesn't want to move to the States, you know, what, where does he go from there? I don't know. I, I mean, know. unless like once fans come back, they re-sign him and use him as like sort of a special attraction type thing. I don't know. Um, yeah. But uh, but that's going to be that, in my opinion, is going to be match of the night easily. And uh, I mean, I know Cole O'Reilly is probably going to be really good. I kind of feel like we've seen. I'm looking forward to Cole O'Reilly. I think it's going to be a solid, you know, it's three stages of hell is what they're doing. Kind of, yeah. That was the other thing that was sort of it's it's a two out of three falls. Your it's first the, fall uh, undisputed finale is what they're calling it. Yeah. Your first fall is a straight up match. And that's got to be won by uh, Kyle, Kyle O'Reilly. O'Reilly. 
Yeah. Second one's a street fight. Cole's going to win that. Mm-hmm. And then you got the cage match, and Kyle O'Reilly's going to win that because Adam Cole's grabbing his giant duffel bag of, of, of $100 bills, and he's probably going to be walking on to SmackDown uh, any time now. Um, so they're going to have their match, and that's going to be good. But in terms of just the best wrestling match on the card, I have no doubt it's going to be Walter Ilya, man. I'm looking forward to this. I've been really enjoying our NXT UK streams, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it uh, it's it's nice being able to follow this story with you uh, and, and watch this go down at TakeOver 35-36. Totally. So, totally. Uh, so yeah. Uh, anyways, let's just hop right into it. Uh, it started off. Over here on my Steve notes, wherever I can find him. Here we go with uh, Dakota Kai versus Saray. I was actually kind of, kind of surprised that uh, they had Dakota Kai pick up a win against Saray, somebody who they're building in a huge way. But if you're gonna, if you're gonna eat a loss, I'm assuming you're gonna have it be against the person who's probably gonna be walking away with this title at Takeover if they want to tell an elongated story with Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez, and I feel like they probably should. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, man. I mean, these two really terrific match. Saray, that drop kick. Everybody sells it like a million bucks. Dakota Kai looked yeah. like she got decapitated last night. Yeah. Um, it was really great. And then Dakota Kai ends up picking up a win with uh, her corner kick. Uh, and even that looked absolutely amazing. After the match, Dakota Kai tries to load up another one. Raquel Gonzalez shows up, runs her off. Picks up the mic, says, Dakota Kai, you'll never be me. You'll never have this. If you wanted this, you could have just asked for a match and a takeover. You're going to have your opportunity, but I'm going to tear you apart. Uh, another thing that Dakota Kai beating Saray here could accomplish is, let's say Raquel gets called up after her story with Dakota reaches this conclusion. If they want to come around to Saray versus Dakota Kai for the title, then you got a story you can work with there, you know? Absolutely, yeah, for sure. Yeah, she should be a, an early contender there for Dakota yeah. Kai if that's the case. Um, and then we get Index, their first date. There were a, a series of, of vignettes. This was the first. It's uh, Indy Hartwell getting ready, um, and Johnny and Candace talk about how they've done everything for their kids. They bought this house at their end so they, the kids can have their own room, so on and so forth. Uh, Gargano says if Indy wants to go on a date with Dexter, they have to make it work. So Dexter arrives. Uh, he rings the doorbell. Johnny answers. He invites Loomis in. And we cut to the bathroom. And Indy's still getting ready. And Candace asks Indy if she has any protection. And Indy says, I'm a former tag champ. And she flexes. She flexes I don't need protection. <laughs> oh, it's so cheesy, but it's pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, then Gargano asks Loomis what his intentions are. Of course, Loomis says nothing. Um, John says, I hope you're taking Indy to a nice restaurant. You're going to show her a great time and get her home by 10 p.m. And hey, no funny business. No funny business. So then Indy and Loomis leave. Uh, Candace is worried about what's going to happen. John says, don't worry. I got their location. I'm tracking them on my phone. Let's go follow them. Yeah, the line about Austin Theory (laughs) being out in the woods or something was pretty funny. Alone in the woods. Alone in the woods, yeah. After that, we have a hit row. Sweating it out in their storage unit with like a, a, a fire and a barrel going. I really mm-hmm. feel like they should have done this outside because I was watching this. I'm like, that is a raging fire. That is a small area right there. I'm not sure if that's like a storage unit or if that's like the interior of a truck. Yeah, it looked like that. It looked like where, where Champa used to do his stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Um, so uh, they mentioned that uh, Legato disrespected their culture when Santos grabbed the grill out of his mouth. And uh, and then they took uh, Santos's mask, the one he used to use to headbutt people, and they threw it in the fire. So they're also disrespecting the lucha tra- lucha tradition mm-hmm. of mascaris. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, then we get Ilya Dragunov promo. He says he's not a man of words simply because where he comes from and the path he's been going, words don't mean anything, but pain means something. Pain. The means struggle, struggle has meant something. The belief in the str- fighting spirit has meant something. So he's put. All the strength, not in his mouth, but in his fist. In his fist. This fist. And with everything else uh, I, I am, I will make the unthinkable happen at TakeOver. Uh, witness uh, the chaos, the rage. History be made. An unbeatable kingdom will fall. When he ends, Walter's reign becomes next uh, uh, NXT UK champ. Pete Dunn interrupts, tells Ilya that before he gets ahead of himself, essentially you owe me a thank you without me traveling the world to thing, the NXT UK title, putting NXT UK on the map and carrying the entire continent of Europe on his back. Ilya doesn't get a challenge, Walter. 
doesn't compete at TakeOver. He damn sure doesn't get to stand in front of the baddest man in NXT. Uh, and uh, he says, to be honest, if I'd stayed in NXT, I'd have put you in your place a long time ago. Ilya says, well, you're talking a lot, but uh, I'm not there because of you. Uh, I'm here before, or I'm not here for anyone else. I'm here because he gave everything he had and carried his often destroyed body to the top. He will make the impossible possible and beat Walter. And that's something done can't change and it's something he never did but he says but that's in two weeks how about uh we have a match tonight uh dunn says he must be mad promises Ilya that after tonight he won't even make it to take over i love Ilya. i love he's so great his promos are so they're so like poetic you know and it, it goes great with the with the russian accent i love that stuff uh la knight has an interview he's got he's there with uh, his butler and uh, uh, <laughs> and uh, Sarah says, hey, or Mackenzie says, hey, you left your partner hanging last week. What's up with that? And he said, no. Oh, Grimes left me hanging. I kept saving him. He was always in trouble. People wanted L.A. Knight. They started cheering, chanting L.A. Knight. I gave him an opportunity and he failed. Uh, DiBiase fills all this stuff in his head like every millennial. Oh, you're special. But he'll find out like everyone else. Whose game is it, Grimes? And then LA Knight's game. Grimes in his shoot voice. It's LA Knight's game. Yeah, that's right. Wah. Now uh, shine my boots or whatever. So after that, I we had. He says, put the title of the show. I like this bit. He says, uh, there's nothing special about Grimes. He's just a butler, a damn good one. He's <laughs> destined to be a butler. <laughs> yeah. He's destined to be a butler. That's good. So uh, after that, we had LA Knight versus uh, Andre Chase, breakout tournament washout. Uh, oh, this wow. was super quick. <laughs> Yeah, it was really quick. Knight got that finish with BFT, uh, and uh, yeah, and then afterwards, uh, Knight's like, "Hey, Grimes, get down, shine my boot." But uh, before Grimes gets to work on that, DiBiase comes out, and uh, he gets a little lost here. He says, "Cameron, I know you're a man of your word, but uh, I have a lot more for you. Uh, you could uh, you could be doing a lot of other things." Uh, I believe in you, and they believe in you. And then finally, yeah. LA Knight steps and says, Hey, at TakeOver 36, Grimes, he's my butler. You can have me a third time, Grimes, but tell you what. Oh, when I beat Grimes, he won't be my butler. You will, Million Dollar Man. And DiBiase says, That's an interesting proposition. I'm a gambling man, and I got a lot of money. My money is on Grimes. You are on. Ha, ha, ha. And I'm yeah. sitting there thinking, what a terrible gamble to take. It really is. I mean, all my confidence points are going to be on Grimes in this match. He ain't going to lose another one. But that's yeah. a wrestling trope, right? Yeah. If you're DiBiase, this dude has lost twice already. You don't put your money and you being a butler on on Cameron Grimes winning. No. No. Uh, after that, we had a Gigi Dolan video package where she talks about running through every top woman in the division. She says she's not doing it alone. Then she has a match. Uh, taking on Amari Miller. Uh, this is pretty quick. Gigi hits a abdominal stretch bomb. Something I had seen before. It was pretty cool. This was cool as hell. That uh, promo was pretty neat too. It was filmed kind of mm-hmm. like film noirish, mm-hmm. and uh, <clears throat> sort of emphasized the kind of promo that she delivers has kind of like a film noir vibe to it too, which is kind of yeah. neat. It's it's different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that finish was rad. That was pretty cool. Uh, after that, we had. Uh, the second part of the index date. <laughs> They're at a fancy restaurant. Indy orders chicken fingers, and uh, they hear Gar- she hears Gargano's voice coming through like on a radio frequency. And she's like, "What is that? Did you hear that?" Of course, Loomis doesn't talk at all, and uh, Indy looks over and she sees that Candace. And uh, has been spying on them. She's there at the table. Johnny is somewhere else, but they're on walkie-talkies together. And mm-hmm. uh, she, uh, Indy, picks up the walkie-talkie. Says, "Johnny, leave me alone." And Johnny says, "Candace." <laughs> she says, "It's Indy. Leave us alone." And then she goes away. And Candace, as corny as possible, but it was really funny, says, "No, the jig is up. We have to abort. Abort." Yeah, yeah. It was pretty, it was pretty funny, funny stuff. Yeah. It was pretty funny. Uh, and then we got uh, William Regal moderating. This Kyle O'Reilly, Adam Cole face off. He's dubbing their third, I assume, final match, the undisputed finale. Uh, he says, match me two out of three falls. They each get a pick, a stipulation. He will pick the third. Kyle O'Reilly goes first. Uh, and he's like, hey, I'm not ripping your head off, Adam Cole, because I actually have respect for Regal. That being said, think of some crazy stipulations. 
but his loss at Great American Bash didn't sit well with him. So the first fall will be a boring, normal wrestling match. <laughs> I wish he had said that. The first fall, straight up, pinner submission. Boring. I wish that boring. that CWC crowd should have been like, boring. I know. I know. <laughs> Says that uh, uh, Adam Cole losing to him in a standard wrestling match will hurt his ego way worse than a steel chair ever would. Boo, Wrong. Boo. So Cole says, Kyle O'Reilly, you're predictable. You're delusional because you think you're a better competitor than me. Uh, says, I've been proven uh, proven for 13 years and I'm better than you in every way. I beat you at Great American Bash fair and square. But Kyle O'Reilly, you're holding on to that when you had it stand and deliver the one where Cole had him beat, but the ref was down. The one that technically doesn't count because it was unsanctioned. Mm-hmm. That's 100% correct. Mm-hmm. Says, then a few weeks ago, you decided to smash my head in the steel stairs and made it clear what you want. And he wants the same thing. The second fall needs to be a street fight. And don't w- worry what Regal's third fall is going to be because we won't need it. I'm going to win 2 nothing, And I'm be the one who wins this saga. So uh, Kyle talks some more. Says uh, it, it's still so convoluted. He's like, you know, I was naive to think I could be a good guy and still succeed. <laughs> but literally, I'm willing to do anything to put you down for good. And then Cole calls him a moron. And I'll be honest. Kind of has a point there. Says, uh, I taught you for 13 years. You're never going to be me. I'm the greatest star this brand has ever seen. And he's got a million reasons to believe that. He says, uh, you're nothing gonna, You're going to be nothing but a footnote in my career. And he, uh, he says, how about I teach you something else? Calls him soft. He shoves Kyle. And then the future stars of NXT uh, separates them. You had yeah, Parker Boudreau, uh, Bronson uh, Reichsteiner. Uh, yeah, and you had I think Hal Bloom was in there as yes. well. Yes. Uh, so they all got separated because they started shoving each other, and then you Regal just said, uh, "NXT's made event scene in the next two to three years." Yes. Yeah, you totally. Yeah, and Regal just says, "Ah, oh, hey, steel cage, war game, no steel cage." Yeah, steel cage. After that, we had a Champa Thatcher promo. Uh, uh, Champa's talking about Oni and Pete Dunne. They want to be known as the baddest men in NXT, but when they had a chance to show that against them. Ridge Holland had to interfere. He says, I get it, but Ridge Holland is no Thatcher. He's no Champa. They're two men who have traveled perfecting their craft. They define everything that is good and just about this industry, but Holland wants to make a name at their expense. And then Champa's about to challenge Holland, and then Thatcher interrupts, says he wants the match. Class is going to be in session. So, I love both these guys. I hate these promos. I can't stand the throw in the chair bit. I can't stand Thatcher's goofy smile at the end. I know what they're trying to do, but it's so not working because they don't come off as badasses. They come off as two dudes who are just trying way too hard and they don't need to like they can totally just let what they do in the ring speak for them. Um, But I'm not in. They're so corny. They're so cornball, dude. Yeah, agreed a thousand percent. I'm not. I have not really been into much of what Champ has done since uh, he finished the Gargano story. A couple of guys that I used to not be into, but I really enjoyed this promo was MSK. Yeah, this was good. Um, their 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 energy and enthusiasm is just it's working. It's clicking a lot more for me right now with these. So they did like an MSK. They were sort of a. Uh, Mocking fun Imperium, of, uh, Imperium, yeah, for like, yeah, like uh, interfering or, or interrupting their their video package, um, and uh, I mean, they, they you know, it was standard babyface stuff. It was really good. I'm looking forward to this match. Should be really cool. And uh, MSK, I, I I get it now. You know, I get it. I a lot more now than I did before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we had Odyssey Jones versus Trey Baxter in a semifinal match for the Breakout Stars tournament. Uh, early on, Trey Baxter tries to work Odyssey Jones' leg. Hits a DDT, a spin kick, gets two. Eventually, though, Jones hits a splash in the corner and then is finished to get the win. It was a pretty quick match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, it was. And then, honestly, Jones has an interview. He says he's excited to punch his ticket to the finals and finally have his breakout for the world to see. Who's your Who's your pick, man? Give it to me I'm now. With Odyssey Jones Odyssey. or Duke, yeah? Odyssey. Mm. I'm going to go with Duke. Uh, after that, we got a Tian Shaw video package. is really quick. Boa just says disobedience will not be tolerated. And then Mei Ying blows mist into the camera. Uh, after that, uh, Kushida comes out of William Regal's office, 
Sarah's waiting there? Or McKen- McKenzie. Sarah. McKenzie? McKenzie? Okay. McKenzie. McKenzie. McKenzie's waiting for an interview. Kushida comes out first. Bivens comes out, says, thank you very much, Mr. Regal. And then you got Julius and Brutus Creed. Their shoot names are the Casper Brothers. Mm-hmm. And they're standing outside the office, and Bivens gives them each uh, cards. You're looking at the te- this episode was littered with the future stars of NXT. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he gives them cards. We're probably going to see them in the diamond mine coming mm-hmm. up next uh, or coming up soon. Anyways, Regal comes out, says it'll be Roderick Strong versus Kushida next week on NXT television. Also Imperium versus MSK for the tag titles. too. That's correct. Also those two. Yes. Uh, then we had Boa versus Drake Maverick. Uh, Drake did get a little bit of offense in the middle part of this match. He's going after Boa's leg a little bit, hits some drop kicks, somersault sent onto the floor. Uh, he gets up from that, slams Boa's leg on the apron. Uh, Mei Ying comes up to him, spits mist in his face, and that allows Boa to hit a roundhouse kick back in the ring to get the win. Yeah, watch out with that mist, dude. I don't know. I'm sure that's good. Mm. Uh, yeah, so anyways, after that, we had uh, the third part of this index date business. <laughs> So it's time for dessert. <laughs> and Jean-Paul, which is a great reference, uh, for uh, Johnny Gargano is now the waiter, Jean-Paul. He's got a goofy wig. He's doing a terrible Italian accent. And he's got a mustache over the fact that he's got a beard and a full mustache. Yeah. And so he puts the cake down. Indy, uh, uh, you know, susses him out, obviously. Ripsa takes off his wig, rips off his mustache. They argue over the cake. Of course, it ends up getting all over Dexter's face. Him and Johnny have a bit of a, a stare off, and then Johnny sulks off, and then they go to kiss, and then he puts her hand on the camera as that hat's happening. And the great thing is when they cut back to commentary, Wade is so disgusted. He says, oh, I'm all about fun and games, but this is getting a little too X-rated for me. I'm like, it's just a kiss that we didn't That's even funny. see. This That's is getting funny. a little too X-rated for me. Man, he's great. Didn't know he was so such a prude. I know. Uh, after that, we had Prime Target on Karrion Cross versus Samoa Joe. They always do a good job with these Prime Target segments. Uh, it seems pretty obvious you're not going to see Karrion Cross in front of the CWC <laughs> crowd until until takeover, though. Nope. <laughs> nope. They might, they're not going to try it next week. This is you would have thought that. What are they? Are, is there even an episode next week? Because this felt like a go home segment. Like, is, yeah, why is. isn't this the go home? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. They'll have some backstage stuff, but I'd be I'd be pretty darn surprised if Cross makes another appearance in front of the CWC before takeover. Me too. Me too. Roman's chilling. Says there's a face to face next week for Joe and Cross. That's gonna happen backstage. That's gonna be like a pre film thing with like Wade Barrett or something. All right, just don't make it X rated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that line did kill me. Uh, and then we had uh, our main event. We had a little video package for Ilya Walter. Then we had our main event, yeah. Ilya yeah. versus Peter Dune. Um, and this is, yeah, man, this is just terrific stuff. They only fought, from what I could tell, they've only fought once before in progress in 2018. Mm-hmm. Everybody said it was a killer match. Mm-hmm. Um, so I might have to check that out. But this is really good stuff. I wish they would have given it a little bit more time. Um, mm-hmm. It did go into an overrun. Towards the finish, as we mentioned before, Walter's music hits. He saunters down. Uh, they sort of go out a little bit more. Uh, 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 Ilya's about to hit his finish, but uh, Pete's able to counter that, hit a bitter end for three. And then, yeah, after the match, Walter gets in, stares down. Pete Dunn. Dunn shrugs, leaves. Walter grabs Ilya. He's able to counter whatever Walter's got in store for him, gets him out of the ring. Then he gets that title and just rubs all and down, all up and down with it. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So there you go. There's your NXT. Let's go ahead and uh, answer some questions here. Sounds like a, a good idea. Uh, let's see here. I just put this thread up right before we got started. So hopefully we have some questions. And yes, we do. Uh, let's good. see here. Anthony R. Is it possible we see Walter and Dragunov on NXT Prime after TakeOver on a full-time basis? I if Ilya loses, I think he might show up on Prime, but he also doesn't fit the bill for what they're trying to do. So I kind of feel like no yeah. on either count. If they've been able to somehow convince Walter with like Adam Cole money to, to come to the United States, it's possible. It's possible we'll see Walter in Prime, but I don't see it. I, I don't know, man. That dude seems like yeah, he's I don't know either. unmovable. 
Yeah, seems that way. Uh, E-Dub says, if not, not, sorry, if not Duke Hudson or Odyssey Jones, who will be the face of NXT in one year from now? It's not Duke. It's not I'm Odyssey. so glad he asked that because on my channel at WrestleJuice, I have uh-huh. a video that explores the future of NXT and what it could look like. And it's uh, Duke. It's Odyssey. Austin Theory. We actually, and, and on top of that, Friendo Club TV. We yeah. actually did a video yesterday where you and I both power ranked who we thought could be champion one year from now. Larson, who are your answers? Yeah. I had Odyssey Jones. I had Ridge Holland. I had Isaiah Swerve Scott. I had uh, Parker Boudreaux. You know, he's a bit of a long shot. And then another long shot, Walter. Other names we talked about that we kind of shared on our list was uh, Cameron Grimes. It's a mm-hmm. distinct possibility. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I think Top Dalla mm-hmm. has has you know, what it takes to be champ as well. And here's um, my uh, my guy from AEW coming over, Will Hobbs. Oh, yeah. Yep. They could promise the moon to Will Hobbs. And uh, and he'd be like, yeah, okay, all right. They, they, they want big dudes, and, uh, you know, I'm stuck here in Team Taz. Because I, I feel like the AEW world title scene is wrapped up for quite a while, Yeah. and I just don't. I think Will Hobbs is like the kind of guy, man, if NXT, if Vince really wanted to like try to stick it to AEW and be like, ha ha ha, we got one of your guys, Will Hobbs might uh, he might make out. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. maybe not. Could maybe be. he's got Could like be. maybe he's just a super loyal guy and would never leave NXT. I don't know or AEW. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. Either. I don't know. Uh, Peachy Tree, if the Ned Center ends up being a swerve and Punk is not there, would Brian Danielson be enough to calm the ready to riot crowds? They'll be appreciative. They'll be appreciative, but. Wouldn't they Stop still it. be? St- they, they would chant CM Punk. Mm-hmm. Those chants are going to be throughout until he shows up. Yeah. Um, Blake Whitehouse. This is a great question. In kayfabe, why does a move finish a match for one person, but not the other? They've perfected it. They've 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 harnessed their their ability with that particular move to make it the strongest move they could possibly do. Hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like for whatever reason, something about Shawn Michaels super kick is just more powerful than a Young Buck super kick because Shawn Michaels can finish a match with one, whereas the Young Bucks can't. Yeah, they just know how to put that extra stank on it. Mm-hmm. You know, because Michaels like, look, I know I can finish a guy with this. Maybe the Young Bucks are like, look, we need to pepper this guy with a bunch of these. That's how we go about finishing. So, matches. for example, to use a boxing uh, analogy for Shawn Michaels, the super kick is that knockout blow, whether it's the uppercut. Or, or, or like a right cross or something. Whereas for the Young Bucks, super kick, it's a jab. Right, right. Same with like power bombs in AEW. Like, they're all over the place. Like, you just do it and then that's it. And then you do more moves. But like Kevin Nash, because he's so tall, he's got extra gravity and more biceps, throws him down harder. Okay. Even though he kind of usually just let people fall. No, he usually just let people go. Both him and Sid, especially in the late, Sid's later part of his career, would just get him up and just let him go. Yeah, which is a very Sid Early thing on, he would kind of drop it. Yeah. Towards the end, he would just kind of let him go. Uh, E-Dub, should Gargano hire Baron Corbin to spy on Index on their next date, and how will Corbin mess it up? He'll uh, like assume that, that Index go to another restaurant. Uh, Baron will probably maybe try to order a bunch of food and then tell the the the, the server that that uh, Indy and Dexter are paying for it. No, oh, yeah, that's good. That's good. I like that. Uh, yeah, he the, he goes to the restaurant, and just puts in an application, but like for uh, uh, salary requirements, he'll need a hundred thousand dollars a week. Yeah, exactly. This is a great question here, Luisa Reza. What's the best thing you've ever gotten for free? Wow. I'll really, I'd really have to, I'd, oh, probably, well, okay. Excluding cool shit we've gotten from friendos. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Gifts like Big Red. Like, Big Red is probably the coolest thing we've ever gotten that we didn't have to pay for. Yeah. Um, or like the uh, the Funko Pops. I got to get those to you guys. But I yeah. uh, got the Funko Pops over there as well. Um, but in terms of just in like my private life, Getting something free gratis? I don't have a great answer for that. I don't either. Like, especially if you take gifts out of it, you know, just like things. If you, you take got gifts out free, of it, yeah, right, you know? yeah. If somebody's like, "Oh, you can just take that," I don't know. 
like there's those times where you order stuff from a, a, a place and you're like, I want to return it. And they just say, here, you can have your money back, but just keep it, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah. That happens sometimes. Yeah. But usually, you know, the reason you want to return it because you don't want it. So you just got something that you got. You don't, free, want, you don't like, really want it at that I point. I really don't have a use for this. You anyway. don't want it at that point. Yeah. But anyways. Uh, creatures, one, two, zero. I mean, it's nice you get to keep the thing, but. It's cool. It is cool. Creatures, one, two, zero, three with some bits. Tim Preston, some bits as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see here. Moses opposes. Out of everybody in NXT's women's roster, who has the best shot? Who would have the best run on main roster? I would be hard pressed to think that Raquel Gonzalez wouldn't dominate main roster. I think she's she's so underrated on the mic. Like mm-hmm. she comes off as so genuine on the mic. It's it's crazy. Like she seems really comfortable, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, Raquel's Raquel's a good answer. Uh White Brownie says obviously depending on next week's go home math. But could you see Dunn getting added just so Walter doesn't eat the pin? No. No, this is no way. This is one on one, man. This is one on one. Yeah. And yeah, maybe this is maybe, you know, this is tell uh telegraphing that uh Ilya totally's gonna win. Like that's the only explanation you have for taking a loss to Yeah. To Pete Dunn. Uh night by night, you recently well, here's another thing they could maybe do. Instead of adding Pete Dunn, maybe Ilya sticks around another week or two after takeover and they have a, a, another match for the title between Ilya and Pete Dunn and Ilya gets his win back there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's possible. Yeah, That's a possibility. Night by night, you recently decided to make a major career change. So you grew out your hair, got a nice pair of aviators, became mm-hmm. a motorcycle patrolman for the CHP. What NXT superstar do you convince to join you on the force? Oh yeah. To be the punch to your John. Cause yeah, I was like, wait, grow out your hair to be CHP. But yeah, that's what they did at chips. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Uh, NXT superstar, man. So Baron used to ride a motorcycle, didn't he? Probably. Wasn't that one of his things back in NXT? Yeah, they did. It was breaking ground. They had a lot of shots mm-hmm. of him riding motorcycles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But he's obviously not an NXT star anymore. Um, no. Current NXT star. Hmm. I would say, uh, no, she's not. Mm. It's Kyle O'Reilly. <laughs> what? That's terrible. It'd be, uh, no, I'm not going to say that. Uh, yeah, I don't know who it'd be. It'd be, uh, <laughs> it'd be kind of funny to see uh, Mei Ying in her whole get up on a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, dang MQ and K Fabe, what is the reason Legato doesn't add a woman to counter B Fab? Um, they can't. They they they're terrible at trying to recruit women. You know, they stumble yeah. their way into like like really sexist things. <laughs> they just can't. They can't. It's like watching. It's like watching somebody at the bar just do a terrible job trying to pick up on a lady. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it uh. is. Jorge D. Steven Larson had a three stages of hell match over Steve stopping Bret Hart, new rumors, and Larson doing new rumor voice. Oh, wow. What would be three stages be? It doesn't yeah. have to be wrestling stipulations. It can be any competitive thing. Uh, okay. So I think so obviously we, the last one would have to be something that we're both pretty evenly matched in, and that would be WCW and NWO World Tour. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Not playing that. virtual pro wrestling. Because I feel like you do have my number in that. If I'm using Minoru Suzuki, you got that right. Right. So not doing that one. Evenly matched, I think World Tour is definitely that. Yeah. And then. What stipulation would you pick? Something uh, you think you would have a distinct advantage. I mean, back when we used to play basketball all the time. Oh, you don't want to do bowling? That's for 300 game? That wouldn't be fair. That wouldn't be fair. I mean, I'd be willing to give it a try. I know. That's fine. But I want this to look competitive. So we were usually pretty competitive against each other in basketball. But I usually came out slightly ahead. So I'm going to say basketball. All right. You know what? I'm going to say bowling. Because then I get exposed to you for the fraud you are. Where's my ring? It was on the floor somewhere. (laughs) Down here somewhere. I got a 300 ring, man. Expose me. Well, here's the thing, though. Like, shortly after I got that ring the shoulder 
It was the shoulder. I gave it like Ilya. I gave everything I had. Now your body is destroyed, huh? <laughs> My often destroyed body. I donh know what I did with that ring. Oh, man, here it is. Right here, proudly displayed next to my Slammy. Look at that. Right next there. Next to your Slammy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. One more good question, then we'll call it a day. Um, uh, Carvelli says, read an ESPN story about how WB recruited Jacob Casper. Can't remember who it was, but a WB person was quoted at the time saying Casper reminded him of young John Cena. John see Cena. Vince being high on a guy with his background. Um, yeah. Jonathan asked earlier, uh, is he related to the mattress? I don't think so. I think no, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think that's the case, but uh, that'd be a great gimmick. Anyways, uh, his, <laughs> his he's got a submission called the sleep system. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> It's, there you a, go. it's a chokehold. It's a chokehold that's <laughs> called the sleep system, yeah. Perfect. Uh, I'll have to incorporate that into new rumors. There Anyways, thanks everybody for tuning in. I appreciate it. Till next, or we appreciate it. Till next time, I assume he appreciates it I too. I appreciate it too. You can speak for me in this instance. That's fine. <laughs> till, till next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye. <laughs>